Hey guys, welcome back to this video series. In this video, I'll be showing you guys how you can use a, a JavaScript framework called Vue.js to bring in all of your headless WordPress data and use it on your website. Um, this is not going to be a full tutorial of Vue.js, um, so you'll have to find that elsewhere if you want to use it. It's just going to show you how you can use the data from your headless WordPress API. Okay, so first thing we're going to do is we are going to create our view application. We're going to use the command line interface or the CLI in order to create this. Um, so if you open up your terminal here and you're going to want to CD into the directory which you will install your front end application. Whoops. Okay, um, so now I'm in uh, the web dev profesh folder on my computer and we're going to go ahead and create this. So we'll say, if you don't already have um, Vue CLI installed on your computer, you're going to use this command. I should already have this installed, so unless there's a new version, it shouldn't install anything. Okay, so it looks like I do have some updates, so um, we'll go ahead and fast forward this and we'll be right back. Alright, so if you run into this error where it says npm error, uh, please try running this command again as the root administrator. Make sure you use sudo if you're on a Mac. Let's try that again. And we'll be right back. Okay, so now we are going to create the application using this line right here. I'm going to say view init webpack um, and we're going to call it headless dash blog. And give it a name. Uh, we'll leave it at that. Project description, we'll leave that. It doesn't really matter. You can change this anytime you want later. Um, what does this say? Oh, runtime or do you want a runtime only? You want runtime plus compiler, so hit enter. View router. For this project, we're not going to use it. I'm just going to show you how to get the data. Uh, no, 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 no. Okay. Um, and so now we have our project created, and you'll see it's right next to our WordPress blog. Um, so now what we want to do is we want to take our WordPress blog and actually rename this to just... Um, admin and we're going to put it inside of our application that way it's all in one folder and then we have to change our maps settings so go ahead and stop the servers preferences and I got a web server and you're going to need to change the folder which it's in um, Okay, so we're going to go inside of the new application folder and choose the admin. Click select, click OK, then do start servers. Okay, let's uh, go ahead and refresh this, make sure it works. Okay, we're good to go. All right, um, so now let's go ahead and open up our project in our... Uh, text editor. I'll be using um, Visual Studio Code. Uh, and the theme I'm using, let me try to find it for you guys, is Hopscotch TextMate theme. Alright, so let me just resize this accordingly. Okay, um, so what, before we actually start our application, um, what we need to do is set our package. Uh, so in order to pull all of the information, we need to use a package called view resource. 
and it does not come pre-installed so what we have to do I'm gonna go ahead and open up the command line in my text in a um, Visual Studio Code you can you can do it in your terminal right here um, but I'm just gonna do it in here since it's a lot easier so I'm gonna go view integrated terminal and I'm gonna say um, npm install view dash resource dash dash save and dash dash save will um, allow will save it to this package.json folder or file and it allow it to be accessible throughout your project easily so now you see it's been added in right away alright next thing we need to do is we need to go ahead and um, let's go ahead and start the application so in order to start it all we're going to do is say npm run dev Uh, we run into an error. Oh, my mistake. I didn't actually install any of the packages. So while this package JSON might, might be generated, um, it needs to actually run an install. So we'll say npm install. And this will take a couple minutes. Um, I'll be right back. Okay, now I'm going to do npm run dev. And this will start up a server, a dev server. And it should automatically load up the default view CLI app. Okay. All right, so now the next step is going to be to actually implement the view resources. So if we go into our source folder in the main.js, what we're going to put at the top where we say import app, we're going to add another line called import uh, view resource from, and then you just say view resource, like so. And then we got to tell, now that we've imported, we got to say, hey, view, use, view, resource. Just basically tells it to use the actual uh, package just like that go ahead and save that oh and one more thing we got to do we're, we're going to set the default um, http request to be our uh, wordpress uh, data so what we're going to say is we're going to say view.http.options.root equals and this is going to be uh, this URL right here. So we'll just copy and paste it in. And obviously when you go into production, you're going to want to change this. Uh, but the good thing about setting this options route is that you only have to change it in one spot right here in the main JS file. When we make, when we call our HTTP get request, uh, it's just going to basically say, okay, use this and then slash um, you know, v2 slash uh, or WP slash V2 slash projects. Um, so it'll basically just extend this URL right here. Okay. So now that we have that set, we'll go ahead and save that. And uh, it should be uh, doing hot reloading. So um, every time you make a change, it should automatically recompile everything. And if everything's working right, it should give you no errors in the terminal. Okay, so now let's head over to our app. And if you look in our app.view, it's actually loading the hello component. Um, so let's go into our component hello. All right, um, so here we are in our hello component. First thing we're going to do is we're going to add another data element in here. So add a comma after message. We really don't need message, but I just want to show you how to do this. Projects and it's going to be an empty array okay so now comes the fun part now what we're going to do is we're going to add a created uh, method so created function 
And so what this will do is this will run every time the app is created. Um, so it'll load everything, it'll create the whole app, and then it'll run this function. And so this function is you're going to call the this method, or sorry, not the this method, the HTTP method, which comes from view resource. And uh, wp slash v2 slash projects. And so by saying get wp slash v2 slash projects, you're essentially saying get like that. Uh, if you don't want to extend this and you want a completely new URL, if you just type in HTTP slash slash, it won't append the default option you set in here. Okay, so we're going to leave it at that. Uh, this get, um, and so once you get it, then we're going to, we want the response of it, and we're going to use the ES6 arrow syntax. Uh, since this will allow us to use this and still um, go to uh, our the, the right data objects. So I know I'm terrible at explaining that, but use the arrow function and we won't have to create a variable called self equals to this. All right, so if we use the arrow function, we can just call this in order to access all of our data. All right, so um, variable response. And for now, what we're going to do is we're going to say we're just going to console log the response just to see the data and make sure it all works all right. So go ahead and save it. Co compile successfully. If we inspect our uh, view data or our application, let me turn off mobile mode. You'll see it automatically um, reloaded, but I'll go ahead and refresh it again so you can see. App was created, and then the response was given right here. And we can open this up in our inspector in Google Chrome. And if we look in data, we'll see there's an array with an object. And this is our project that we created. OK, cool. Um, so now uh, what we're going to do, well, first, let's add an error. In case this didn't work for whatever reason, um, we want to add an error. So we're going to put that right here. We're going to say error, and we're just going to alert the error. Because if for some reason the data didn't pull, we want the users to know, hey, something went wrong. Of course, you can put a custom error system in here if you like. I'm, I'm not going to go over that right now, though. Uh, just put this on new line, like that. All right, so now instead of console logging this, what we're going to do is we're going to set our project variable to be all of our projects. So to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to create um, a for loop. So we're going to say for, and we're going to say let uh, project in response. And if we look in our inspector, notice we had to open up response, and then we opened up data. So we're going to say response dot data, and this will basically access every item in that array. Um, and so for each item in the response data, we want to access this dot projects, which accesses this variable right here. And we're going to push it. We're going to add an item to there. And what are we going to push? We're going to push the response dot data, and then bracket the project um, yeah that, that should be it save that and now if we refresh our application um, check in your view tab if you don't have this view tab right here check the uh, Google Chrome uh, store for the extension this is a must-have if you're going to be using view applications so open up your view tab and open up the component hello and you should see the projects in here. And we only have one project, but let's just add another project so I can show you that it'll load all of them in here. Uh, where's the projects? Add new. And we'll just say test, test project 
and we'll use the same feature damage because I'm lazy and we'll just say uh, none date created this day publish and uh, we'll have to refresh this And now we have two objects in here, and here's our um, title. Now this is the first one we created. Uh, so the newest one is actually going to be first. So it loads newest to oldest. Okay, so now that we have all of our projects in our project object, and we can easily create a component. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and delete all of this for now. And we're going to create a uh, div, and it's going to say v4 equals um, proj and projects. And this is essentially just going to say proj dot, and then you can access whatever component you want or whatever element you want here. Um, so we'll say the title dot rendered. So proj dot title dot rendered. And we'll put this in an h1 tag, save that, and it should auto reload. There we go, the test and the web dev profession. Those are the two titles of the project we created. Uh, and so using the, um, the view uh, extension in your Chrome developer tools, you can essentially look in here and see what you want to access. So let's pull the image out. So we'll go better featured image, so we'll say, image source equals and actually it's going to be colon source uh, proj dot better featured image dot um, and then we'll go into media details sizes medium source URL I know it's a lot but let's see media details dot sizes dot medium dot source URL okay and the image tag like that and there we go the featured image showed up all right and so using the dev tools that I was just showing you you can pretty much access any property you want that you created in the WordPress app so let me just show you real quick if I update this to test two it's going to update here on the next refresh because, uh, yep, test two. There we go. All right. Um, so that is how you connect your Vue.js application to your headless WordPress application and how you use all of your data in there. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know if you have any questions down below, and I'll see you guys in the next video.